Hello, I'm Dr. Jay McCartney. I'm a psychologist in the UK and I'm fascinated with human behaviour and especially all things crime. So in this episode, I wanted to pick up on the Netflix um, latest offering, Crime Scene, which is set in the Cecil Hotel in LA and particularly involves the case of Elissa Lamb. Before I get into the video, if I could ask you please to, to like and subscribe and please feel free to make any comments. And just remember, this is just my speculation and it's, you know, I haven't diagnosed anybody. So Elissa Lam was a 21-year-old Canadian student who was in LA. I'm not entirely sure why. I think she was on some kind of vacation there. But there's footage of her specifically um, when she was getting in and out of a a lift, an elevator, and the, her caution about her kind of going in seemingly was there, somebody else there, and she was known to have suffered from bipolar, and if she was having a, a psychotic episode at that point, whether she was seeing something that was a, a, a hallucination to her, whether there was something that she was hearing that wasn't quite there. But she seemed very disturbed. You look at this footage of her and she seemed very, very disturbed and also very alone. That's the other thing that struck me about this. But obviously, the whole thing about crime scene is it, it's about the, the armchair detectives, if you like, putting together their thoughts and their ideas about what could have potentially happened um on on that day to Alyssa because as you, you may or may not know she was tragically found in the water tank of the hotel the water tanks that they keep at the top of the hotel and it was only a, a little while later when a another guest had, had made a complaint about something about the water that they went to investigate and they they found her her body there and of course there's lots of speculation about why she was found without her clothes on and her where were her clothes was there another accomplice and it seems that there's a lot of reading into the situation it's it seems and it strikes me as being a, a sad situation where this young girl on her own didn't have the understanding or the cognitive ability at that time to be able to call on her family or the authorities, some kind of resource that would have potentially saved her life. And what could have potentially been going through her head at that time? What thoughts could have been going through her head? It, if somebody is suffering a psychotic episode, it, it could have been anything. It could have been absolutely anything. So I'm not going to speculate particularly on what she may have been thinking, but she was obviously a very disturbed young lady who, after the footage of her by the lift, took herself to the roof of, seemingly took herself to the roof of the Hotel Cecil. And for some reason, whether she thought she was getting away from whatever potentially she she may have thought was persecuting her or whether she was being, she thought something was, you know, luring her into the, the water tank, the, the sadness is that's where she ended up. And that's how she met her death, by drowning. But the interesting thing about the whole, the whole thing about the Hotel Cecil is, of course, it's got a great big long history. And I think you could look at any old building anywhere in, in London, in New York. This is particularly in L.A. You could look at any old building anywhere and there'll be history attached to it. There'll be tragedy attached to it. There'll be killings. There'll be murders. There'll be people that have taken their own lives there'll be history attached to that building. And you could look at it and you could speculate and say, oh, it's all just really bad luck. And obviously some places potentially have more history attached to them to others. And I read somewhere about the Hotel Cecil being on LA's Skid Row. So perhaps it did have more chance of people that couldn't look after themselves or people that were hiding from other people, you know, gangsters, mobsters, whatever. And so proportionally, there may have been more crime attached to this particular hotel. But 
it, it would seem that the, the armchair detectives got a hold of a, a few nuggets of what they believed information and started, you know, adding two and two and making five or coming up with certain speculative ideas about what was going on for Elissa, what was going on in the hotel, and it all put itself together and met at, 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 on the, at, at the tragedy of, of the roof. But it, it's interesting that none of her family or any of her friends took part in the program. But there was just lots of people coming up with their ideas. And this is often human nature. Somebody will get an an idea of some description or another. And the interesting thing is why that becomes attractive to other people. And often there's a sense of um, de-individualization. Sorry, I'll say it again. Often there is a sense of de-individualization, which means that I'm not the only person having this thought. And of course, with the rise and the spread of social media, at the click of a couple of buttons on your phone, you will always be able to find somebody to create an echo chamber with that believes the thing that you believe. There's there's people out there, however wild and speculative it may have been and completely off the wall it may have been, there's always going to be somebody out there. And if there's somebody out there, then there's another somebody out there. There's another somebody out there. We can think of many incidences where one person's idea has grown into a, take for instance cults, you know, one person's idea and interpretation of a, say, a certain passage in the Bible has then spawned into an entire cult that believes a certain thing. It, it It's not necessarily about religion as well. It could just be about the belief of that one person and they will attract like-minded people who are looking for somebody to justify the beliefs and thoughts that they've had about a situation and in crime scene that would seem to be what was going on that you would have people that would believe something and then that would attract other people that wanted to believe as well and then you know it's like a ripple effect and then more and more people are attracted to this idea that something nefarious went on at the Hotel Cecil with regards to Alyssa Lamb, when really it would seem that it was just a tragic and awful situation that a young girl who was having a, by all means, it, or, or seemingly by all means a, a, a psychotic episode, ended up losing her life. So those are my thoughts about the Netflix series Crime Scene and particularly about the Hotel Cecil and particularly about Alyssa Lam. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed my thoughts about this. And if I could please ask you to like, subscribe and feel free to put some comments in below. I do read them. And until next time, thanks ever so much and goodbye.